The fourth video in the Tools of Chemistry unit, unit is on significant figures. Uh, you can see our learning targets here. We want to be able to identify the number of significant figures in a measurement and also report answers and calculations to the proper number of significant figures. Uh, your resources here, you can see uh, there are links to a few practice uh, worksheets and websites. Uh, if you ever want more practice on, on significant figures or sig figs as we'll call them, if you just Google significant figures practice, you would probably get dozens of different websites and worksheets. Uh, so don't just limit yourself to these if you're looking for extra practice. All right, for our key ideas and definitions, I've just uh, uh, written here just to follow along with our short guide to significant figures, um, which I, I have here, uh, which you were provided with in class, or if you need a copy, you can get it off of SharePoint. Um, a lot easier in writing all this stuff down. So we're just going to kind of go through this short guide here in the video, and while we do that, we'll jump back and forth to some of the examples and practice problems uh, that, are, that are on your note sheet. All right, so our short guide to sig figs or significant figures. Uh, first of all, recall from uh, your learning how to measure and your measurement practice that we always record all of our known digits in a measurement, and then we always estimate that last digit, and that where that digit is estimated is based upon the divisions on our measuring device. These are all the significant figures. So significant figures are all of the known digits plus one estimated digit in a measurement. So sig figs only deal with measurements. We have some rules that we can use for determining if a digit is significant. So in other words, we didn't actually take the measurement. Uh, maybe we're just looking at a, a number and a measurement. We want to know whether or not the digits are significant. And these are the rules that we follow to determine that. All right, first rule. All non-zero numbers are always significant. So if it's not a zero, you know that it is, it, it is significant. Either it's measured or, uh, excuse me, either it's known or it's estimated. Uh, so in this first one, 72.3 grams, that would be three sig figs. Uh, that three being the last digit, so that would be the estimated one. And then 9,238 kilometers, the eight would be the estimated digit. Uh, that would have four sig figs in it. All right, the second rule. If you have zeros between other sig figs, or in other words, between non-zeros, then those are always significant. So our two examples here, 605 milliliters. I know the six and the five are significant because they are non-zeros. That makes the zero in between them significant because it's between two sig figs. So there are three sig figs here. The estimated digit here would be the five, being the last sig fig. Uh, so we've estimated that it's somewhere between 600 and 610, halfway between there. This next one is sometimes a little confusing because we have two zeros in a row. Uh, that doesn't change the fact though that those zeros are between non-zeros. Uh, so both of those zeros are significant. So this would give us four sig figs. The seven here would be the estimated digit. Uh, so we know it's somewhere between 20.0 and 20.1 degrees Celsius estimating that it's 7 tenths of the way, so 20.07. All right, the third rule. If we have a final zero, meaning zero at the end of the number, and that zero is to the right of the decimal, then that zero is significant. So this first example, 9.0 millimeters. This is a significant zero, meaning we have two significant figures. We're putting that zero there explicitly to say, yes, it is a sig fig. In this case, that is the estimated digit. Uh, in other words, wh whatever measuring device we have here is marked every whole millimeter, and we're saying it's, we think it's right on the nine, so estimating the last digit, we say 9.0. The other example here, similar situation, 30.0 moles, that last zero, we're putting it there specifically to say, yes, we are estimating that it's 0 0.0. Now, the fact that this last zero is after the decimal makes it significant. The middle zero has to be significant then because of the previous rule. This middle zero is between two sig figs, so it is also significant. So this has three significant figures. All right, the uh, final rule concerning number of sig figs 
deals with placeholder zeros. And these are always the most confusing. Uh, hopefully, we'll clear some things up for you here, though. Placeholder zeros are never significant. Now, a placeholder zero is simply a zero that is there to hold the value of the measurement. I'll jot that down here. Holds value of measurement. Okay, but it's not known or estimated. It's not known or estimated. Let's take a look at the examples here. This first measurement, we have 4,320 grams. This zero is not significant. Yes, it is a final zero, but it's not after the decimal. This is a placeholder zero in the fact that if I were to remove it, if you just would pretend that you covered it up, I no longer have the same value. A okay, 4,320 with the zero is much different than 432. That doesn't mean it doesn't need to be there. When we say it's not significant, that doesn't mean it's not important. All we mean is it's not known or estimated. I just have to keep it there so I keep the value of the measurement. In other words, this two, that's the estimated digit. So whatever device we're using is somehow divided or marked every 100 grams and we're estimating to the tens place. We have to put the zero there to hold the value of the measurement. Same thing over here on the next example. All three of these zeros are here simply to hold the value. They are placeholders. In this case, we have estimated the nine. So it's somewhere between 10,000 and 20,000 kilometers. We're estimating the nine there. These zeros are not significant. The other type of placeholder zeros you'll have, and these are easier in my opinion, are leading zeros. Leading zeros meaning to the left of the number. Any zeros to the left of the first non-zero, they are never ever significant. So these three zeros here, 0, 0.00, those will never under any circumstances be significant. Now the last zeros are, because that goes back to our previous rule, they are final zeros to the right of the decimal, so those are significant. So, so this has four significant figures. And then the second example here, these leading zeros, again, they are never going to be significant. So the first sig fig would be the one there, and that gives you three sig figs. All right, the last rule here uh, really does not apply to determining number of sig figs. Um, it applies to whenever we don't have to worry about sig figs. Counting numbers, i.e., if you were to count, say, the number of students in your class, you just count them up. You're not measuring them. You count them, so you count 22 students. That is an infinite number of sig figs. There's no measurement there, so we don't worry about them. Uh, I, I suppose it might not even be right to say it's an infinite number, uh, but I think it makes the most sense to students to say that. Or another example of when we might have infinite sig figs is if we have a defined constant. An example of that would be uh, equalities such as 5,280 feet equals one mile. There are exactly, by definition, 5,280 feet in one mile. I don't have to measure that out to determine that. So other things like uh, 100 centimeters equals one meter, that would also be defined. There are exactly 100 centimeters in one meter. Uh, so there are no sig figs to worry about there because it's not measured. All right, let's take a look at some of the example problems here and some of the practice problems. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the notes page. And the first example problem here simply asks us to determine the number of significant figures in each. Uh, so for each of these, we'll talk about the rule uh, that, that it applies to. So if you, I would keep that guide handy uh, for your own convenience. All right. Question A here, 19.08 centimeters. This would be four significant figures. We know all the non-zeros are significant. The zero being between other uh, significant figures, it also has to be significant. So that is four sig figs. B, this would be three sig figs. Remember, the leading zeros are never significant, so those aren't. The three sig figs here would be the seven, two, zero. Remember, final zeros after the decimal, they are significant. We put that zero there at the end to show that we have estimated it. 
It is an estimated uh, zero. It's not just there as a placeholder. All right, C, as this is written, this would be just two sig figs, only the, the one and the two. These two zeros are there as placeholders. In other words, if I were to, to remove one or both of them, it would change the value of the measurement. If I were to just cover up both of those zeros, oh, see my pen's in the way. If I just turn that to 12, obviously that's very different than 1,200. Now that does not make those zeros significant. We did not, we don't know them or we haven't estimated them, uh, but they do need to be there as a placeholder. D, 18 pencils. Well, we probably wouldn't measure a number of pencils. We'd probably count them. Uh, so I would say this is infinite. Okay, infinite. We don't have to worry about sig figs uh, for counting numbers. All right, question E, this would be two sig figs, both non-zeros, 28 degrees Celsius. Sometimes a student will look at this and say, well, that should be infinite, uh, just because they see a whole number, and I think we think counting numbers. Okay, we can't count degrees Celsius. Okay, we don't get to sit in a room and just count up how hot it is. We have to measure it, so that is two sig figs. F, this would be three sig figs, uh, just the three, the nine, and the two. Because again, remember, leading zeros are never, ever significant. G, as this is written, this would be just one sig fig. Because these two zeros here are, are written, uh, are, are final zeros, but they're not after the decimal. They're there as placeholders. So just the six is significant. Now comparing G to H, you'll see one difference. Notice there is a decimal point at the end of that. This is notation that we can use to indicate that we have, in fact, estimated that last zero. So in other words, that makes all of these digits significant. If we estimate the last zero, then that means that that middle one has to be known. So this is three sig figs. Another way you can write that is to use a line over the estimated zero. So for example, we could write it like this, 600 with a line over that last zero milliliters. Uh, I know you've seen this notation before in math. This does not mean the same thing. In math, it means that series goes on infinitely. Uh, in chemistry, with measurements, it absolutely does not mean that. All it means is that that's our estimated digit. If we wanted to write 600 milliliters to show that the middle zero was the estimated one and we had two sig figs, we could write it with the line over the middle zero to show that we did, in fact, estimate that middle one, making that two sig figs. All right, uh, go ahead and flip to the practice problems now. Um, again, it might be a good idea to pause it and try this on your own. Um, so I'm just going to the second page here. We'll come back to the first page here in a little bit. Uh, just work number one here on your practice problems. All right, 1A is two sig figs, just the one and the nine. Uh, no, B uh, would be six sig figs because these final zeros after the decimal make them all significant. So all six there would be significant. Uh, C would be two sig figs. Remember, leading zeros are never significant, so just the two and the five. D would be three sig figs. Notice the difference between C and D. Uh, the, the zero at the end here, that is significant. It's there to show that it's been estimated, so that's three sig figs. E is five sig figs. Those are all non-zeros, so uh, makes them all significant. F is three sig figs. That final zero there is a placeholder, so that is not significant. G, 27 students, uh, that would be infinite. Again, we wouldn't measure a number of students. We would most likely count them. And then finally, H, remember leading zeros are never significant. So our first sig fig would be the first five there. And then the last zero would also be significant because it's a final zero after the decimal. So this is five sig figs. All right, I want to go back to the short guide now. I'm going to pull that back up here. Now that we've seen how we go about identifying uh, the number of sig figs in a measurement, we are going to look with how we deal with significant figures in calculations. There are two different rules that we have. Our first rule deals with calculations where we either add or subtract. We add or subtract. And uh, in order to explain this, I just have an example here. Okay, uh, Here's our example. Say we had um, a table, okay, and we've measured the dimensions of the table. The length of the table 
we've measured to have a dimension of 137 centimeters. Notice this would have three sig figs with the seven being the estimated digit. In other words, we've estimated the length to the ones place. The width, uh, we have used a different measuring device apparently, and we have a dimension there of 24.63 centimeters. Notice here we've estimated all the way to the hundredths place, so we've used a different measuring device. Now, we're asked to find the perimeter of this table. So as we know, we just want to add up uh, the dimensions of all four sides. So that's 137 centimeters plus 137 centimeters for the two lengths, and then plus the two widths. You plug this into your calculator, and it's going to tell you 323.26 centimeters. Now that might seem like that would be a great answer, and certainly if you were in math class or geometry or something and you're adding a perimeter, I'm sure that's what your math teacher would want you to write as the answer. However, that doesn't consider the fact that these measurements actually have error in them. This first measure at the 137 centimeters, we've estimated it to the ones place. So does it make sense to be able to come up with a perimeter all the way to the hundredths? I don't think so. I don't think it does. So what we need to do then is we need to round this answer to the ones place. You can see down here this is exactly what we've done. Our calculator tells us 323.26 centimeters. Now we have to round that to the ones place because our initial measurement only was estimated to the ones. So we look at the next digit, it's less than five. I leave the ones place as a three and my answer is 323 centimeters. So as far as what the rule actually is, that's jotted down up here at the top, in adding and subtracting, the precision of our answer, in other words, where that last sig fig is, should match the precision of the least precise measurement. So we need to look at the decimal places. The first measurement has a sig fig in the ones decimal place. The second measurement has a sig fig all the way to the hundredths. I have to round to the least precise, so I round to the ones place. A good way to do this, especially when you're learning how to do it, is uh, when you go to add them up, uh, just like when you're in elementary school, when you learn addition, subtraction, you're taught to line up the decimal. So if you write it out like this, I think it's very helpful. So we're adding all these up, and these are all in centimeters. And then what I would do is I would just put a dotted line after the last sig fig in the least precise measurement. So that 137, I know that's my least precise, so I have to round uh, to the left of that dotted line. So just filling in what our calculator would tell us here, uh, 323.26, having to round to that spot right there. Uh, that's how I then round to my 323 centimeters. All right, let's take a look at some of the example and practice problems now dealing with addition and subtraction. All right, so question number two on the example. Report your answer to the correct number of significant figures. And I have not calculated these yet. I'm going to do that right along here on the calculator so you can see what's going on. I think that will be helpful for you. Uh, so number, uh, question A, excuse me, we have 28.4 meters plus 17.89. Again, I think it's helpful to line up the decimal, so I'm just going to write it down here, uh, plus 17.89. Now, I know you could probably just do this in, in your head or just real quick, but I'm just going to plug it in the calculator too. Uh, so 28.4 plus 17.89. Calculator tells you 46.29. That would be meters. Meters plus meters would be meters. The thing is, though, this first measurement only goes to the tenths place. So I need to round my answer to the tenths place. The digit after where I'm rounding is a 9. I know that kind of got cut off there at the dotted line. That's a 9. So I'm going to round up. So my answer is 46.3 meters. Uh, what I like to do just to remind myself, so I've rounded for sig figs, is I'll just draw an arrow and then write the letters SF over it to show I'm rounding for sig figs. And there's my answer. Now when some students think about rounding for sig figs, they think, well, we just do this because we just want an estimate. Uh, we, don't, we don't really want the exact answer. Remember, there is no such thing as an exact measurement. 
So there can't be an exact answer in the way that you might be uh, familiar with it, like, like in math. This is the only thing that makes sense. I can't have an answer that's any better than any of my measurements. Um, if I take very poor measurements, I'll have a very poor answer. Uh, the old cliche of a chain is only as strong as its weakest link applies very much here. The answer to any calculations can only be as good as the worst measurement. Uh, if the calculations involve measurements, that's just a matter of, of the significant figures involved. All right, question B uh, is subtraction. Uh, so obviously we'll subtract, but it's the same rules. I'm still looking at the decimal places. So I have 3.587 minus 0 0.097. So 3.587 minus 0 0.097. Your calculator tells you 3.49. But if you look at the values you have here, both of these have significant figures going to the thousands place, tens, hundreds, thousands. My dotted line would go here. So I'm missing a place in my answer. Here is a, here is a case where I get to add a zero. My answer should be reported as 3.490 grams. Because both of those measurements go to the thousands place, I get to have an answer that goes to the thousands place. So I get to add a zero there to the end of that. All right, question C. Again, we have addition, 1,387 plus uh, 2,200 excuse me, 22,970. I'm gonna add those up. Let's see, our calculator will tell us 1387 plus 22970. That equals 24,357. Remember, this zero, as it's written, is not significant. So I have to round, I'm gonna put my dotted line to the left of that zero because it's not significant. I have to round to the tens place here. So I look to the next digit, it's bigger than five. So that would be 24,360 meters. Notice I can't just drop that digit and put nothing there. It just becomes a zero as a placeholder because I have to hold the value of the measurement and the answer. I just can't have a significant figure there because of the fact I don't have a significant figure in the ones place with this second measurement. So here's my answer to question C. All right, question D. Question D, 27 grams plus 8.8 .8 grams minus 3.3. The fact that we have two different operations here doesn't change our significant figure rules because it's the same rule for addition and subtraction. So I have 27 plus 8.8 .8 minus 3.3. .3. So if you plug that in, 27 plus 8.8 .8 plus 3, excuse me, minus 3.3, .3, minus 3.3, .3, I get 32.5, 32.5. Now ask yourself, where do I need to round? Well, this first measurement, the 27, only has a sig fig to the ones place. So I need to round this to the ones place. All right, here is a situation that will arise from time to time in our rounding. I look to the next place. I have a five. Now, in your previous learning in math and all the way back to elementary, you were always taught if it's five or bigger, you round up. Well, it's a little bit different now. This is exactly halfway between 32 and 33. 32.5 is exactly halfway between. If it's exactly halfway between, in other words, if it's exactly five, so this, if it's 0.5 or if it was five zero zero or five zero 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 zero, then I always round to the even option. So my two options are either 32 or 33. The even option is 32 grams. Now I know that's a little different than what you've seen before. Uh, the very end of your guide to sig figs, there is a, a list of rounding rules there that goes through this. If this was 32.501, we would have rounded up to 33 because that's closer to 33 than 32. But if it's exactly halfway between, 
you always choose the even digit. This way, statistically, you round up just as often as you round down. All right, uh, that's the end of the examples for the addition subtraction. Uh, let's take a look now at, actually, we're going to do this. I'm going to end this video here. This is getting kind of long. I'm going to end the video here, and uh, I will pick up with the uh, multiplication division part on, on the next video.